Hey guys, to help run the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. My goal is to be unbiased and transparent. It's a privilege to serve you. This is not an endorsement. Let's get into it. So we're downtown Long Beach, California. We got the new multi-charger here, and I picked this spot because it's got these beautiful orange flowers. And maybe I wore this shirt because it's orange. <laughs> this pike just really called out to me when we saw it at inner bike recently um, these are actually some of the bikes from the show and this is chris nolte of propel bikes hanging out with me today hey guys and you brought another charger right like what's this one back here so this is a charger gt touring because it's got the cassette and the derailleur okay cool because what we've got over here with the multi-charger is it's the vario uh the enviolo powered by new vinci continuously variable planetary transmission uh, you might be familiar with this. I've reviewed it on some of the other e-bikes, but you can shift it standstill and it's stepless. So there's just this nice smooth transition from different gearing ratios. This is the N380 SE. So it's special edition designed for cargo applications in this case. Can handle 100 Newton meters of torque continuously or up to 120 um, peak. So that's neat. And it's great because in this case, we got the Bosch Performance Line CX high torque motor. This is like the mountain bike motor that you see on uh, other applications, but recent Mueller spec this pretty consistently across their line. You can opt for like a speed motor or a high torque motor. And so what we've got here is the, it's the speed motor. This bike frame, it's only in one size. It's only in this one color for now. And it's interesting because I measured from here to here. That's sort of my frame size or seat tube sizing, about 18 and a half inches, uh, which is a, seems a little smaller, uh, but that actually makes it fairly approachable. It might lower lower this standover a little bit and considering how much space we need for this stoker bar this is optional uh, and then the suspension seat post here this is awesome this is the Thudbuster st from cane creek that's giving you a really comfortable ride for a hardtail bike 70 millimeters of travel up here on the sr sun tour air fork we do have compression and lockout as well as rebound down at the bottom nice stuff like they they use a lot of similar parts across their line it's all pretty high end and in the case of the suntour fork we've got these reflectors added and they've taken away like the stickers and the colors and stuff so it's just really solid consistent lines here beautiful colors with these orange racks 11 pounds on the front with this like wooden board platform like 125 back here on the rear this is a little more than two feet long and it doesn't come with this pad but if you add that you get these little pegs and this stoker bar, now you've got basically a two person bike. It's not necessarily a tandem because the rear passenger can't pedal along. They're just along for the ride, but you don't necessarily need that extra support because you've got that really efficient mid drive motor. Love how the weight is positioned on this. You might not have even noticed initially just from the pictures, it seems like, okay, there's the battery, there's the motor, but this is actually the optional secondary battery. The primary battery is built right into that down tube. Really awesome. That's the power tube from Bosch, roughly 500 watt hours another 500 on the power pack so you're talking about a kilowatt hour of battery capacity which means you can go a little farther or you can carry a little bit more weight so i think that's just a really great application of energy if we come back here to the the new charger or what is now just kind of the standard charger it's the same thing it's got the power tube the power pack as an option when we look at the multi-charger the price point here is like 5800 bucks or 6,800 bucks if you get the two battery options. Sort of what we're looking at here, $177 for that rear passenger setup that I was just showing you. The price on this is definitely at the higher end, but Reese Mueller is a premium brand. You know, they have really high quality, very sturdy frames. They use the best equipment. And you can see that with like the Magura MT4 hydraulic disc brakes. These things have 180 millimeter rotors with big dual piston calipers. By the way, we've got a 15 millimeter through axle up there. So that's a little bit sturdier. A little bit more support for steering tapered head tube actually coming back to that fork that's pretty nice like this this fork is is high quality um, but in the back another 180 millimeter rotor so you're getting a little bit more of a mechanical advantage and then the tires in this case or the wheel size is 26 and the tires are 26 by 2.15 so as compared to 27.5 by 2.4 these are a little bit wider a little bit taller maybe you know lowering your attack angle might smooth out some bumps and things but it raises the whole bike up a little bit whereas with 26 inch wheels the, the shorter spokes they're a little bit sturdier and it makes this rack 
or seat easier to mount so you don't have to step as high. I've been riding all over the city here and one of the sort of trade-offs with a rear passenger setup or a big loaded trunk is that, you, you know, swinging your foot over like that, you kind of bump the rack or you might bump your leg on the handlebars and stuff. So it comes back to this step over and they do have that mixty frame. So instead of a higher top tube like this, it kind of comes down, makes it more approachable, but then you don't have that second battery option. So there's, there's trade-offs, but I think they're very conscious trade-offs. They've done a really good job. And some of the other highlights here, they're using um, a special shim adapter. So they're going from, I think this is 34.9 millimeters down to 31.6 for this longer Cane Creek Thudbuster. And then the nice gel saddle from Sully Royale. We've got the locking ergonomic grips from Ergon. Interesting to see like a longer handlebar. This is about 740 millimeters and sort of a, I think they said it was just like a six millimeter rise on that stem. So it's it's like kind of, you know, it's a little bit more forward and, and wider. And that might give you a more mechanical advantage and sort of a smoother, slower steering, which would be great if you have the racks loaded up versus over here, we've got the Ergotech 5, a little bit shorter bar and definitely more raised up. So this is a more upright ride as a result, whereas that might be a more powerful kind of smooth ride. Um, interesting, in some ways, this sort of feels like a mountain bike setup just because the way those bars are set up, at least to me. I love how the front rack is frame mounted. So when you turn, it's not steering with you. It's not dumping your load. And again, this is like 11 pounds of capacity versus about 6.6 .6 on some of the other Reese and Mueller models we were looking at. The other day we were looking at the Culture and it has like a, a nice rack, but 6.6 .6 pounds versus 11. Right. You know, this is cargo oriented, whereas that was like, you know, around town, some, some drinks or whatever. Whereas this is like, you know, actual cargo. We do have some extra mounting points on the side of this rack. And then I really like that they've included an Abus Bordeaux folding lock here. This is not the alarm version. This is just your standard, you know, folding lock, but still Abus does a great job. It's black, it matches, it's key to like to the batteries. So you don't have to worry about having multiple keys and sort of getting those mixed up or getting just the clutter of that. And then I love that they've included bottle cage bosses right there below the top tube. That's just awesome, whether you're doing another accessory or actually putting um, a drink holder and you might have to do like a side mount because sliding up could collide with the battery if you've got that second battery option. It's just, thank you, Reese and Mueller. It's nice to have that option. I call it out frequently on bikes. I don't think it makes the frame look any worse. You know, you, you could take, you could even take these bolts out if you wanted to, but it's still a very clean line. It just gives you the option without having to use additional accessories. So thank you for that. I also noticed this Trans X. This is sort of like a seat clamp. Nice that they've got a rubberized, a little bit larger one here because you really want to crank that down when you've got a seat post suspension and the stoker bars. I mean, if these are being pulled on, you're probably more possible to have your seat kind of getting wiggled out of position or something. And uh, you know, on the on the flip side, if you're really having to push hard or pull hard on that, that can hurt your fingers. So it's nice to have a nicer seat clamp there. Little attention to details. I haven't actually ridden on the back of this yet, but yeah, it's totally going to happen a little bit here. We were counting the, the the sprockets, and it looks like 26 tooth in the rear, 24 tooth up front, and they've got this nice plastic chain ring cover. They've got the 170 millimeter Reese Miller branded cranks with these decent pedals. Uh, I remember talking to Chris, a different Chris in New York City, and he has the load. And I was like, yeah, have you ever thought about swapping those pedals out for some with pins, something a little bit better? And he's like, no, you know, I've, I've had those and I slip off and I cut my shin. So this is decent for some people. I've also cut my shins like a lot. Uh, I think you can see the scars and stuff on, on my legs, but I, I don't care. I just prefer to have like a, a really sturdy pedal. So it's up to you and it's a minor a replacement type of part. I'm glad that they didn't go with cage style pedals. These are better than those. I'm trying to be really thorough here and just sort of look at everything. I think the other call out here is that this doesn't have uh, the Purion or the Kiox bigger display. It has like sort of the mountain bike oriented Purion, which doesn't have quite as many readouts and stuff. I'm gonna get to that in a minute, but you know, it does free up the center of the bars for this nice supernova. This is like the e-bike light that's wired in. Same with the backlight from Bush and Mueller. That one's like two little LEDs, whereas the headlight's a little bit brighter. What was it like 170 lumens? 135 on that one. Oh, 135, not bad. Yeah. And it does point where you steer and it's not mounted to like the arch or anything. It's not gonna collide with the rack. It's not under the rack, it's way up high. So it keeps you visible. 
points where you steer. I, I like that. That's that's a win for me for sure. And then these extra wide 65 millimeter plastic SKS fenders, they're gonna keep the bike and the battery casing pretty clean, but you can see a little bit of mud and water kind of splashing up onto that Bosch Performance Line CX motor. Gotta love that huge kickstand. Double leg makes the bike really easy to load, much more stable. That's a pretty sturdy stand and it stows nicely. It stays out of the way, but when it's in the down position, as you see here, if you try to pedal backwards, you get pedal lock. So that's, that's a trade-off, you know? Like, I don't know what to do about that. If you want the double leg kickstand, that's totally the place to put it for frame strength and integrity. A lot of the other bikes, like this Charger, we've got an adjustable length. Looks like the Plesher kickstand that's sort of rear mounted. So you can pedal backwards or even walk the bike backwards which sort of initiates the backward pedaling motion. I like that these rims have reinforcement eyelets and stuff. That's not the case when we come over here to the multi-charger. And this one, it doesn't have the plastic cover. It's just got the little alloy Miranda, kind of a bash guard or chain ring guard. In both cases, it's gonna keep the belt or chain from coming off track. I don't have the chain version of this. What, what are the other versions of this bike, Chris? What are the options for multi-charger? Yeah, so this is the Vario, which comes with the Enviolo and the belt drive. This is the CX version, so it's just the multi-charger Vario. Now there's also the multi-charger Vario HS or high speed, which comes with the speed motor. Yeah. Um, and then you have some options. You can get the, the GX Touring. So GX is kind of the grand crossover, which is generally you'll find uh, mountain bike style tires on it hmm. and so they have the GX Touring which is mountain bike tires and the uh, derailleur and then the GX Touring HS high speed which would be the high speed version neat and then they have a Touring light uh, which is not the GX so it'll come with you know these standard type tires with the with the derailleur as well okay so that's like the most affordable is like the light version Right. No continuously variable transmission or any of that. And, and again, we were just looking at this, really going into detail the other day. It's like five and a half pounds for that versus maybe a pound and a half for a derailleur and cassette. Um, these really, they don't have like a set service interval, so you don't open them up and drain them or do any cleaning. They just work, hopefully forever. <laughs> um, dare I say forever. And then the you'll notice there's no derailleur here. There's no chain tensioner or belt tensioner or anything. It's all... It's all done with these two wires. That's sort of what changes the gears or the gearing ratio inside. 380 degree is decent. It's, it's imagine like a 10 to 38 tooth cassette. And Bosch does have shift detection with their motors. So this is the Performance Line CX. It's measuring rear wheel speed, that little sensor right there and the magnet. It's measuring pedal cadence and pedal torque over a thousand times per second. And it's listening for changes in pressure uh, relating to shifting in addition to sort of your pedal cadence. So it's really smooth, super responsive, one of the better motors in my opinion, um, but it does weigh a little bit more. This is 8.8 .8 pounds and Reese Mueller's using kind of the bubble casing. It's not really up sort of like integrated into the frame as much, but that gives you room for the dual battery and the power tube. So I, th I think that's fine. The casing does a pretty good job of protecting it uh, all around, pretty good stuff. And then we have the Gates carbon drive. This is the CDX center track belt that really works well. Very quiet, probably twice as, twice as long between changes as like what you would get from a chain depending on the application. Um, it's interesting to see this too, like you'll notice there's the horizontal like sliding dropout system and that helps to create the belt tension. That's really what's going on on there. And then here's the rear, rear light, like another close up on this. So even with a passenger or some extra paneers or bags loaded up the light would hopefully still be visible i definitely appreciate that and reflective sidewall stripes on the tires too because this is an all black frame so when you think about visibility it's really nice to have those extra you know especially if you were, were like using this to go on longer rides doing a touring or something like that maybe you could even take along another power pack um, in the in the bag some sort of like gear bag or something like that the interface is compatible, backwards compatible, with the Power Pack 400 battery, which is kind of nice. I really like how accessible the Power Pack is. It's got that little handle built in. These both have like little LED indicators built into them. Uh, the thing is, you I think you have to kind of spec it like this when you buy the bike. You can't necessarily add the Power Pack on later, right? It's ideally you'd... That's right, yeah. So 
if you want the hardware to mount the power pack, you need to order it with the power pack. Um, yeah. yeah, there's... Makes sense. Yeah. Which brings us to a couple of our considerations. <laughs> uh, one of them is that this is a heavy bike. It's like, I think 75.9 pounds is what we weighed it at. But keep in mind, that's with the 5.7 pound power pack in addition to the power tube. That's with the passenger kit with the pegs and the pad and the handlebars. That's with the lock, the front rack. That's everything you see here. That's what I weighed with Chris. So you could reduce the weight a little bit. And I think frankly, you, know, you can buy yourself a super lightweight bike and feel good about it. And then you add a bunch of your accessories afterwards. Right. In this case, the accessories all match. They're key to like, they look cool. They're really durable. So maybe it's not so bad, but Risa Miller tends to be heavier even when you look at just sort of the, the maybe not quite as accessorized uh, models. Um, the other piece here is that, you know, the price point that we talked about, there's also this sort of like wait time that happens when you're ordering. They, they, they come from Germany, they custom build them there for you to order. So right. you might be waiting one to three months. Is that kind of the situation? Yeah, generally speaking, um, you know, it is pos they, they generally get shipped via sea freight, which can take some time. Mm -hmm. uh, the bikes are built to order. Um, and you can, on a bike like this, you can actually get it upgraded to air freight, which definitely oh. cuts down the time quite a bit. Interesting. Uh, Do you but know it, how much that adds to the cost? Uh, so air freight is $300. Okay. Yeah. You know, we're talking about $5,800 bike. If you're really excited to get it and maybe take advantage of the summer months or s certain events, that could be worth it. Yeah, it's a common thing that people will do, without a doubt. Um, but um, yeah, and I think that over time, you know, they're getting faster with their production, that sort of thing. They're launching a new facility in January oh, that's awesome. in Germany, which is a really big deal. Uh, you know, they've just been growing so much. They actually, when I visited them a couple of years ago, they were basically doubling their space, and now they're, you know, they started building a new building uh, wow. a couple of years ago, and and they'll be entering that in, in January, which That's is pretty awesome. exciting. I always enjoy spending some time with Chris and he's letting me sleep on his you know, guest room here for this review, which is very nice. Um, because he was one of the, the people that went to Eurobike and, and sort of you know met with the people at Riesen Mueller and said, hey, why don't you guys try the US? We'd love to have this premium bike offering here too. Um, and I think that's neat. I've gotten to meet Heiko, one of the co-founders when he visited like a year or two ago great people really growing a lot i was really surprised to hear that like they're one of the number one customers for new vinci and for they have like the roloff e14 electronically shifted hub which is on some of the other models so i'm gonna go ahead and hop in now and just show you the display got a power button up top we'll just press that it comes to life pretty quickly the Pyreon's a little bit more limited. You know, the screen size here, it's like 1.7 inches. It's a little bit smaller, but it's still backlit, so you can see it at night, which is nice. It does swivel a little bit if you don't over-tighten it, but not quite as much as the Intuvia. It's not removable. It does have a little micro USB interface here, but it doesn't put out any power. That's just for diagnostics and stuff, which is kind of a bummer to me, because it's like, well, you got two big batteries and maybe you are using a GX model and you're touring, going off road or something. It'd be nice to be able to charge your GPS or something, but there's uh, there's all these kinds of accessories like backpacks for phones and stuff that do that. And I think Chris was giving me, he's like, well, hey, some people, they have us swap them, right? Yeah, yeah, we can always swap the uh, the Purion for Intuvia, so that's another option. What's the price on that, Chris? It's probably like, 200 bucks or something like that around the hardware and then there's the yeah. labor okay great nice see it's nice to have chris on hand this is this is great we got speed up at the top here if you want you can change from miles per hour to kilometers per hour by holding minus and tapping power a little secret there for you and then if you hold minus it cycles through some of these other little readouts so right now it's range if we click up to the lowest level of assist eco you're getting 50 percent support it says 106 miles so that's with two batteries not even completely full pretty spectacular. That's based on my last mile or so of riding. So it's very dynamic. If I click up to turbo mode, it drops all the way down to 52 miles. So back at the side, I estimate the range at between like 25 and like 140 miles. It's very dependent on if you get two batteries, how much you weigh, are the tire pressure full, you know, a lot of hills, wind even. So neat to see that this is going to be custom and give you personalized feedback. If I arrow down just, well, well minus, 
down to EMTB mode. That's a special mode here that's measuring all the same signals as before, but it's relying a little bit more on pedal torque. So you don't necessarily have to click the buttons anymore. It's just like, are you pedaling harder? Oh, I'm gonna help more. So it's 120 up to 300% output, a really big range versus these steps. So that's cool. That's one of the features that Bosch put out over the past year or two. And then down at the bottom, we have a light infographic. You can turn the lights on and off by holding the plus button. Unless you have the HS speed versions, in which case that doesn't work. They're always, they're always enabled. I think Chris and other shops might be able to get in there and make some adjustments if you really want to turn the lights off. Now that they're on, I want to give you a little kind of look. Pretty bright, you know? This light is super durable. It's got like an alloy casing, but it doesn't have side like vents. It doesn't really like shine out in any direction except forward, which is something that I like with some of the newer lights. Um, I'd love to see Supernova do that. And then we just got two LEDs and a big reflective surface on that rear light. Okay, then we got a battery infographic, five bars. So roughly 20% steps on that. Um, it'd be nice if that was a little higher precision. The new Bosch Kiox does show you battery percentage, which is really nice. And it's got Bluetooth integration for heart rate monitoring and stuff. That isn't available on the Purion or the Intuvia. Can you, can you upgrade to, no, I don't, that was something we asked Bosch. It was like, hey, can people get the Kiox? And they were like, not really right now. You know, it has to be spec'd. Yeah, at the moment, the supply is pretty limited, and they're just focused on their OEM partners for the Kiox. Mm -hmm. Might be something that changes in the future, but at the moment, it's it's only for the bikes that are spec'd with it. Okay. Well, thank you for that feedback. If we hold the minus key, we go from range readout to assist readout, which, by the way, you see anytime you click the buttons momentarily, and then it might switch back to a sub menu. So trip distance if you want to clear trip distance you hold plus and minus See, it says reset boom cleared it and then we hold minus again total so that's our odometer this is a brand new bike man let's see here range and so we, we've just cycled through so that's kind of it there's also walk mode down here if we press that and then hold the plus button that could be really useful because the motor is just going to move along at a couple miles per hour and if you're in a place where it's inappropriate to ride or maybe you don't feel super comfortable because it's loaded up really heavy and you've got a lot of people or it's kind of like a tight alleyway or something. Walk mode's great, and I love that Bosch and Risa Mueller have left that enabled in this case. I've got some more details on, on all the displays back in the forums at electricbikereview.com. As always, I welcome your feedback. Maybe there's something I'm missing or you, you want to see more of, kind of deep dive. I do read the comments as much as I can and try to get help and stuff. I'll be doing that. The only other cons that I want to talk about here maybe relate to the Bosch motor. It uses this proprietary, like smaller chain ring that spins at two and a half revolutions for every single crank revolution. And that gives it really good chain retention or belt retention in this case. It makes it very responsive. And I think it gives the motor a mechanical advantage, but you know, it's, it's spinning a little bit faster, sometimes can kind of create a little bit more noise and a little bit of friction because of that. Um, what's it called? It's reduction gearing. That's right. Yeah. It's a reduction gear. Yeah. So if you're pedaling without motor assistance, which you can do, it's, you just take it to zero, the lights will still work. The display still works, but the motor's going to introduce a little bit, a little bit of drag. And if you're trying to go above, in this case, 20 miles per hour, again, a little bit more drag than if this had just a, a traditional size chain ring up front. Um, Chris, are there any other considerations or things that maybe you haven't heard me talk about that you want to add? Um, yeah, some other details. It is uh, capable of fitting uh, child seats. You know, right now it has the passenger pad on, which is strapped on here, but you can do uh, actually up to two child seats. Two child seats is a little bit tight, but it's definitely possible. Well, I want to look at the under carriage here for a second, because yeah, so you can see these like big openings there. So we're talking about like the yep maxi type of seats yeah yep or something similar now yep is owned by Thule, so Thule has kind of their own version and we'll see what en ends up happening long term with that brand but uh there's some different types of mounts that will work on this okay. um you know so so that's an option which is really nice i mean i think that overall the charger has always been a really popular bike and uh, this type of configuration with the belt and the Nuvinci or Enviolo now has always been really popular. So it's just kind of expanding the application of that setup, yeah. which I think a lot of people appreciate because it's like, okay, I love my bike, but <laughs> I want to be able to put my you know, 10 year old on the back of my bike or yeah. something like that. And 
you know, actually, somebody had commented recently, like, why would an eight-year-old be on the back of a bike or whatever? Why don't they just ride their own bike? But the reality is, in urban environments and that sort of thing, mm. you want to keep your child with you. That's a great safe, point. And it's a really big deal. Yeah. And, you know, and, and it becomes really a car replacement. Those scenarios where you might otherwise take a car, you could take a bike. And, yeah. you know, I mean, I'm excited to, you know, take my wife out on date night and that sort of thing. And, and just, yeah. you know, and it's... And the crazy thing is, it's not, it's not any longer than the standard bike. That's, which, that's a great a, point. We measured it. This is like 74 inches long. Okay, and I also measured width and standover height, saddle minimum saddle height. I was thinking like, huh, okay, uh, most bikes are like 72 inches long. Right. So this is a couple inches longer, and I thought, oh, it must be a longer frame because this is a mid tail. It's kind of a new term for me. It's yeah. Pretty, thank you for teaching me that. And then we came over here and I was like, I bet this one's gonna be a little shorter. But no, it's actually the same. And this one has, the, again, the 27.5 inch wheels. So slightly, slightly like wider diameter. And they're both the, roughly the same length. That's yeah. cool. I mean, so Risa Mueller, they've always had, you know, slightly longer wheel bases. They make, you know, really beefy frames, something that attributes to the weight quite often, but it's just a really tough bike and you know they're able to kind of utilize that space which was already there and just kind of you know shrink the wheels down a little bit and and make that you know more accessible for other purposes so guys i just wanted to see kind of show you how this battery comes out because Reese miller has a couple of these like dual battery options some of them it actually opens from the top like the homage right um, on there like many of their low step bikes it, it opens that way um in this case, they've got it from the bottom. So Chris is on that side. He was just going to use the key to sort of open right. this. So this is an Abus Plus uh, key, same key for this wow. battery and this. And you have this kind of cover for the battery. So we'll turn the key and the battery just pops out. It doesn't, it doesn't fully come out, so it's kind of a safety lock. But if you want to actually remove the battery, you're just going to kind of push this down here, hmm. let it drop out at that point you actually can fully remove the battery wow and then you have uh this is great there. and they've got like a nice carrying strap too so that's, that's right. not every company has that that's going to help you reduce drops you know just get a little a handle on this thing yeah. it's got the little battery infographic charging port bosch gives you a four amp charger for these batteries so it's a little bit faster and you can charge them together sort of in tandem so you plug into one port on the bike and it sort of charges them in series and then when you're riding it drains them parallel so one pack isn't getting drained all the time it's right. like they both drain kind of evenly i think that's neat a little bit heavier on the power tube about 6.3 pounds versus 5.7 on the power pack really interesting at least for me to see how Risa Miller has mixed the two uh, on some of their bikes but then they have the supercharger which has like two integrated batteries uh, the second battery is just in the top tube so very cool very neat and integrated cables I mean there's as you've probably seen on some of the other reviews recently I talk forever about these bikes because they've kind of got everything right and I want to do them justice especially at the higher price points so yeah there's a lot of complexity a lot to talk about um and there's a lot of you know thought that goes into them i think that that's the thing that you know sometimes it's not so easy to understand like the difference of the bike or the difference in price between different bikes and that sort of thing but when you look a little bit deeper and you look at the parts you look at like what's actually involved in the engineering and everything else then yeah you know you, you start to get a little bit of a different perspective on things yeah we're trying our best or you know i can speak for myself here i'm trying not to just point and tell you what the components are and leave it at that i want to explain what it means too like what what they do to improve the ride or give you like the strength or the ease of use so that's great man there's the there's the folding lock we're going to lock up this bike and then maybe take a little ride together i want to do the passenger seat thing like i promised and uh, just show you some other ride tests here in fact well he's doing that i'm just gonna roll the bike forward there we go chris i'm gonna i'll be right back so we've already powered it up. I'm going to take it to, I like EMTB mode because it's so responsive. And now to shift gears, I'm just going to twist this little half grip thing and get the little infographic like the guy is climbing. It's a little bit higher pitch now. 
And that happens when the motor's operating at high power and high cadence. Feeling very stable. Downshift a little bit. I like that the Bosch performance line motors offer up to 120 RPM. So the pedal cadence can be really fast and the motor's not gonna drop out on you. So, you know, if you see yourself coming up to a hill and you're like, okay, downshift, you spin a little bit faster, but it works out pretty well in the end. It doesn't fade away on you. And even with the more aggressive handlebar positioning on this, I still feel fairly upright. For reference, I'm 5'9", 135 pounds, so I'm a little bit of a lightweight, but uh, I still got the reach and the leg extension thing going on. Okay guys, from here you can see the NVLO powered by NuVinci. This is the N380SE, so it can handle higher torque operation. We got the Bosch CX up there. Fun little pegs and everything. I'm just gonna ride along and shift through the gears. You won't necessarily be able to see a whole lot besides this little piece moving as the wires pull. Uh, but you should be able to hear the motor changing pitch based on uh, the gear ratio. So that's kind of cool. put you far enough out that you can see the suspension a little bit and then just notice when I turn and steer the rack doesn't actually move so it's a little bit more sturdy up to 11 pounds on that I'll just take a little ride downtown to be able to shift back down at standstill just get started again without hassle especially if that rear rack was loaded up with a bunch of gear i mean it can support like 125 pounds it's pretty pretty sturdy okay i got the backwards cam set up should be kind of fun chris is going to follow along behind um, i am being extra careful with my leg when swinging it over because you're mounted to the little stoker bar uh, for the passenger seat here that's an option it's like 177 bucks um, yeah, just be careful with your leg. If you have a bunch of cargo here or this bar so you don't, you know, slam your thigh right into it and get bruised up. I'm gonna ride on the back, you guys, and just try to explain how it feels. I'm guessing that compared to like some of the full suspension, two-person models like the load I mean that is sweet it's super plush you've got that front box sort of configuration with the optional child seats and stuff up to three if you get like the load 75 that's right yeah yeah and uh, one thing to note you know talking about comfort and that sort of thing is is the tires and the rear would be one of the things that would contribute to that the most I'd say 
Um, at the moment, I have them pumped up to 50 PSI, which definitely is kind of on the it's higher high. range. No, I, I did that partly because if I was going to go on the back, because I'm 190 pounds, technically it's rated, rated for 125. Yeah. You're even oh, I'm a, little bit, oh boy. a little bit above it, but I'm so sure I got the we'll helmet be... on this time. <laughs> yeah. You know how the Germans do. They kind of overbuild things it. a little bit, but, yeah. uh, but yeah, I would definitely recommend, you know, kind of staying within those weight room. The parameters. Just yeah. what I'm trying to get out here, you guys, is Chris has a suspension seat post. He has a suspension fork. That's going to benefit both of us. The longer wheelbase might help both of us a little bit, but this is going to be a little bit less comfortable than if it had rear suspension. I don't know of any, like, setups like this, this sort of, like, second passenger that have a rear suspension it's just too hard to do structurally so i don't know if that's necessary even to say but the pad should out, give me some some relief at these little things okay got the the pegs are all out look at that sweet ready to go dude all right ready to go yep see he's in the hill mode there because he wants to start off without struggling too much Cool. Feels pretty good so far. Yeah. Oh boy. I feel pretty good with the handlebar position. Oh, we're gonna go down. <laughs> there we go. Worked out all right. Actually, I was able to sort of stand up when we went off that curb for a second. So the pegs help a lot. It's not just all on my, my butt. Yeah, Chris is talking about kind of leaning or being conscious as a passenger. Can you feel that? Yeah. <laughs> Shaking him around a little bit. Well, that is cool. Chris, I appreciate it. I've had a fun time riding around. I might head back and grab his bike. For the full written review on this and many other recent Mueller electric bikes, I'll see you guys at electricbikereview.com. Have fun out there. Ride safe like we are trying to do. Uh, and I'll do my best to answer your comments and stuff. All the specs are back at the website. Have fun out there. See you next time.